Good evening, everyone. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Thank you all for showing up and coming out to celebrate one of Christians' sacred celebration. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So we are going to get started. We give God honor for this day. I want to give God honor for my life. I want to give honor to the senior pastor of this house, Pastor Stevenson. Pastor Ron, thank you, sir, for this privilege and opportunity to serve. So we are going to call to worship. And it's a Friday, it's not a Sunday, so we know that we kind of put worship to Sunday, but we're in the house of God, so we are going to worship God. We are going to reverence God. Amen? Amen. Father, we honor you, and we thank you. We ask you, dear God, that whatever is done here be done to the glory and to the honor of your name. So we're here to celebrate Good Friday, what is known as Good Friday. And why is it called Good Friday? For Christians, Good Friday is a crucial day of the year because, it's, because it celebrates what we believe to be the most pivotal day in the history of the world. On Good Friday, Jesus willingly suffered and died by crucifixion the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. So we are saying, why is it Good Friday? It is Good Friday because Christ went all the way to Calvary for us. Amen? And because he did, it was not the nails that held him to the cross. It was his obedience to his Father and his love for us, for you and for me. Amen? So that's what kept him to the cross. It is Good Friday because he traded places with you and me, and he stayed on the cross. Amen? And the one question I want to ask to you tonight is, were you there when they crucified my Lord? And it's a question that you are going to have to grapple with and answer at some point. Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Were you there when they placed him in the tomb? Were you there? And we celebrate Good Friday because we know that Sunday is a coming. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. So we are officially called to worship. Our responsive reading will be taken from Matthew 27, and we are reading from 27 to 51. And we are reading from the King James Version, and in my Bible it says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered him unto the whole band of soldiers. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns that they put upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off him and put his own remnant and put his own remnant on him and led him away to be cru to crucify him. And when they were gone onto a place called Golgotha, that it that it is said a place of skull, saying Eli, Eli, Lam, and I cannot pronounce the word. So, (laughs) 
Oh, I'm sorry, 34, sorry. So that's why I can't pronounce that word because I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> they gave him vinegar to drink. <laughs> And they crucified him and parted his garment, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. They parted my garment among them, and upon my vestor did they cast lots. And set upon his head the accusation word, this is the king of the Jews. This is the king of the Jews. And they that passed by revived him, wagging their heads. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and the elders, said, mm. He trusted in God. Let him he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. Now then the sixth hour now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. Some of them that stood there, when, when they heard that, said, This man call it for Eliza. The rest said, Let be, let us see what Eliza will come to save him. Whether Eliza will come to save him. And 51 all together and behold the veiled temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rock rent amen 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 opening prayer are we having someone Father in heaven, I thank you, I honor you, I magnify your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you that even over 2,000 years ago when you went all the way to Calvary for us, Lord, and when you were on the cross and they mocked you and they jeered you and they did all manner of evil against you, Lord, you stayed on that cross. You stayed on that cross, Lord, because you know that this year would come and we are going to need you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you that when you were in the Garden of Gethsemane and as you grappled, Father God, with your impended debt, Father God, as you grappled, as sweat, as blood replaced your sweat, Father God, and you said, if it is possible, let this cup. Father, I thank you that you did not stop there. But you said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Father God, I thank you that there was a nevertheless in the garden. Because had you not said, nevertheless, Lord, where would we be today? 
where would we be today? So Father, I thank you for your obedience. I thank you for staying on the cross for each and every one of us that's represented here tonight that is blood washed, born again and sanctified. And for those, Father God, who are going into the water baptism today, Father God, it, be, it is because you said nevertheless. So Father, thank you for this sacred day. As we come, Father God, to honor you, to honor, to give thanks for what you did for us all the way back over 2,000 years ago. Father, thank you, honor you. May your presence be ever here with us, Lord. We thank you for what's going to be done. We thank you for the word that will come forth, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to anoint the speaker as she come and deliver a word, Father God. May it not fall on deaf ears and stony hearts, but may it purpose, dear God, what she intend and what your Holy Spirit intends tends it to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? He went for us. 
He's a great God. You are great. Can somebody just say that? Say, you are great. You are great. Yes, God. That sounds sweet. Say it again. You are great. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. We can bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take it.
Jesus, hallelujah. God so loved you that he gave, that's what John said, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Try. Drink of the waters, come and thirst no more. Oh, come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for.
with me. Say at the cross. Unconditionally, you love us even when we don't love ourselves. You love us. Bless your name. Oh God, my heart sings. Holy is the Lord. You are worthy, oh God, to receive glory. Oh yes, Lord. I'm just singing a new song to Him. Whatever's coming in my spirit, I will sing to you, Father, because you alone deserve my praise. So I bow in the very presence of the Almighty God. Oh, I worship you, Jesus, for thy fear in the house. Let's shift what needs to be shifted. Let's not let the rocks cry out in our place, but let us bless the Lord. As David said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything that is within me, oh God. I command my hands to praise you. I command my mouth to speak. 
speak in praise of you. I command my heart to love you, God. I command my soul to bless you. Jesus. Because above all, Hallelujah. above every other God, you stand. And we're here to celebrate you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, yes, oh God. Bless your name, oh God. Jesus, we're here to bless you, God. We're here to honor you. We're here to roll out the red carpet for you. We're here, God. We want you to know we're here just for you. Not for anybody else in this sanctuary. We are here for you and you alone. God of wonders, God of all majesty, we bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. You are above all. Yes. That means there's nobody else that can take your place. You are the highest. You are the greatest. None like you, God. Bless your name. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on, can we just lift our hands in the presence of God? Yes, 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 Lord. Jesus, Jesus, above all, thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I'm so grateful. My heart is full. When I think of what you have done, Lord, you put us before yourself, Jesus. Oh, God, now we exalt you. Above all powers, above all kings. Come on, sing it if you know it. Above all
together. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan, unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased word of the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, I have the wonderful opportunity of baptizing a young lady. I remember dedicating her when she was but a baby, and now she's a teenager. And this is the, one of the joys that I have as founder and senior pastor of Spring of Water Christian Assembly. Being able to dedicate these babies and then watching them grow up and going on in life and doing great things for God makes my heart uh, so happy, so joyful. Praise God. So tonight, I'd like you to put your hands together for Azaria Paul. She grew up in this church, and she's now at a place in her life when she, where she wants to identify with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, too, went through the waters of baptism. He didn't have to, but to set an example for Azaria, to set an example for those of us who have been baptized in water, Amen. Jesus himself went down in the water. Praise the Lord. The passage we read said that when he came up out of the water, amen, the heavens opened and there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And God is so pleased with you, Azaria. And so I'm so delighted as your pastor to invite you to come to the waters of baptism. Praise God, praise God. Is there anything you'd like to say before we baptize you tonight? Um, I'd just like to thank my parents for raising me in the church. And I've had many struggles through life, but I know that God was there with me and he will continue to be with me throughout the rest of my life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Azaria, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? If you so do, say, I do. I do. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? And because he lives, you too shall live. I do. Do you believe that upon your baptism, sins past? present sins that you may commit in the future are all washed away in the waters of baptism. I do. Azaria, upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. a mighty hand clap. He's worthy to be praised. I love you. I 
love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, say I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Say my heart, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul, my soul in
church, glory, right? Glory, glory <laughs> so, I don't know if Pastor Karen still has a song in her. <laughs> and uh, you're now in the ha hands of the ushers to come with your tithes, your offering, your giving, your love offering. I'm trading my sorrows. Trading my shame, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord.
thank you for being so concerned about us. That you left your throne, came down to this earth to suffer and die in our place. Thank you, Jesus. Join me in saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today we commemorate and remember the suffering on the cross of Calvary. The fact that you are crucified and you willingly accepted all that were thrown at you. You could have called legions of angels down to rescue yourself from the crowd. But you chose not to do that and to go through that horrible and agonizing death on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father Lord God, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We lift up your name. Thank you, Lord God, because you have given us another opportunity to bring ourselves to this house. To express our thanksgiving unto you. That today is a, is a special day. It's a day that is set aside. I know that there is no amount of uh, description that we can put to what happened today. So all we can say is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the offering on the bowl. Lord God, we thank you because you have made provision for us. You are giving us abundance so that we can bless your house. And so we thank you for this. Thank you for making provisions for us. We say, Lord God, all that is in the boat today, Lord, you will use it to build your kingdom in the name of Jesus. I pray for those that gave and those that could not give. Lord God, I pray that the blessing that you will pour upon the people, they will have no room to receive in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Take our glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Philip. And next we are going to have a selection by the Randolph Community Choir. Thank you. 
one more time. secret God can do what he has done for others he's doing here at Spring of Water amen let's give the Lord a hand clap I said let's give the Lord a hand clap and let's put our hands one more time together for the Randolph Community Choir a choir that has been birthed out of this ministry and oh, how we give God thanks and praise. praise Thank you, God. Pastor Karen. Amen. Won't you stand? Won't you stand? Hallelujah. Let's, let's give her a hand clap. Let's give her a hand clap. Look, there they are. There they are. They, they truly appreciate you. They truly appreciate you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have something great going on here at Spring of Water, and I just trust that each one of you would recognize that. Amen. Recognize that. Hallelujah. And just come and, and support your church. Amen. And, and the best is yet to come. I said the best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Well, of course, uh, you didn't see Pastor Sonia here this evening. She's not feeling well. Um, she's been ill this entire week. And uh, for her not to be here, you know that she's not well. And she was trying to push, but I said, dearest, please, 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 let me push. Amen. And, uh, but she's home, but she's watching the service, and I know that her heart also is overjoyed. Praise the Lord. Please remember our Resurrection Day service coming up on this Sunday. I uh, want to invite each and every one of you to come back. Come back. Amen. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Tonight we're going to be ministered to by Pastor Karen. I've asked her to come and preach our Good Friday service. Put your hands together and welcome the woman of God on tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Do you have a microphone? This one is not that great. Praise God, praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, 
what an, what an honor to, um, to be able to deliver the word on Good Friday. And I don't know about you, but I was so excited to get to this day. Not because I'm speaking, but because I love, I, I'm so proud of Jesus. I'm so, I'm so proud of Jesus. I'm not sure what we think about him collectively. I would like to think we all are so proud of him. Yes, and it should show, right? But God is such an amazing, amazing God. Um, and first of all, Pastor Ron, I want to thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to minister the word. This is how we get stronger as pastors, as ministers, as we're allowed the opportunities that we're given to bring the word and to share what the Lord has laid on our hearts. Because you know what? The same anointing that is in Pastor Ron is in me. And it's in you. And you could be up here ministering the word of God. We are all ministers, believe it or not. The Bible calls us ministers of reconciliation. And so we're all ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I just want to thank Pastor Ron and Pastor Sonia for allowing me to, um, to do this. Um, I want you also to know tonight that every one of you is special to God. And that God sent his son to die on the cross for you. And I believe that he has a word for you. Um, you're not a mistake. If you ever, I, I know there was a time I thought that in my life. Why was I born? But I realized that I am not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are not in the wrong place. You're not born in the wrong family. The Lord has determined the boundaries of your habitation. He has done that. It is him who said you will live in the north and not the south. It's him who said that you will go here and not there. He said these would be your parents and these would be your siblings. He did that. He, he, that's his control, right, as God. That's him showing us who's in control. That we can't determine where we come from. We can't determine uh, who we're born to and what family we're born into. But one thing we can do is we can make a decision that we are going to live our lives out loud for Jesus. It doesn't matter where you start. It's how you finish. Amen. And so this time I'm so grateful to, to be here. And I, let me pray first. Let's, let's do that. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for your presence, your holy presence. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your willingness, your agreement and alignment with the Father. Hallelujah. In the, in the heavenly realms, in eternity, before the earth ever was, you and God and the Holy Spirit, the great triune God, created and, and came up with a plan to rescue fallen man. And that included us. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us eternity again. Thank you for putting eternity in our hearts, oh God. We bless your name for that. In Jesus' name. I pray, amen, and I pray that you'll receive the word of the Lord today. So I am coming off today of a 21-day fast, and I, can, I know that there's some um, indication of, of the fast because my skirt feels like it's falling, <laughs> but praise be to Jesus, it will stay up. Um, this fast has been just a very different fast than I've ever been on before. There was something very critical I felt in my spirit about this particular fast. And so I didn't 
ask anyone, you know, would you join me on the fast? I felt like this one was for me alone and God. And so as I, as I moved through each day, I, it wasn't even about staying away from food. It wasn't that. It was the closer that I got to God, the closer and the louder and the clearer I could hear him. Yeah. Like never before. And every day I would wake up and I would pray and, um, and I would just find myself wanting more of him. And I want to encourage you, if you're not used to fasting, don't, you don't have to start at 21. Start at 2. Start at 1. Right? Start at a half a day. But you can pray without fasting. Amen. But you can't fast without praying. And so when you fast, you have to pray. To stay strong in what you're doing, you have to pray. Yeah. And, and I found out that God is so ready to speak to us and to, and to be with us when we yield ourselves to him in that way. And so I thank God for that. And so this last week of the fast, we, um, we have what we call boot camp. And this is Holy Week, and we have Holy Week boot camp. And that's for the young people. And if you're here and you're a part of Vibe, I just want you to stand for a minute. If you're here and you're a part of Vibe, I want you to stand. Aiden, thank you. We have a lot that are online. Some of them are not here. I want to congratulate these young people. You, in the beginning, I was pretty much sending out messages to them, you know, let's go Vibers at like 5.55 in the morning. And I'd do that and, you know, some of them would come on and you can definitely tell they're still in bed. But as they started to do these fa uh, the fasts and pray, they began to grow and you could hear it in their prayers. Let me tell you where we are today. That was boot camp number 20 for us. And not only that, but boot camp, probably around the, I don't know, maybe the, the 15th one or the 16th one, I said to them, I'm not leading this anymore. We're not going to lead it. The leaders are not leading prayer. You guys are going to do it. And though they showed up and showed out this week. I've never heard them pray like that in my life. I've never heard it. All of them. All of them led it. And you know what? They didn't just come and say, give topics. They actually gave scripture. And they said, this is the scripture that I want to share with you this morning. And they began to share the word of the Lord. And what came out of their mouths, all of us, the leaders on the line, all I could hear them, everybody was going, mm, 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 you know. But I just want to congratulate them because, and openly and publicly, because it's very important to encourage our young people, and for them to know that Jesus died, and he died with a purpose for your lives, that you have purpose, you will fulfill your purpose. As long as I'm in the earth, I will see to it that you fulfill your purpose in God. Today, I want to talk about one of the most powerful statements that ever was spoken. I'm going to say the most powerful one-liner, if you will, that was ever spoken in the history of mankind. Can anyone guess what it was? Amen. Who said that? You can't say that. You live with me. <laughs> it is finished. It is finished. And Jesus spoke those words as he hung on the cross between Two criminals, but I want to I want to I want to say something about the the position that Jesus was in before he came. Jesus was in glory with his Father, enjoying fellowship with God, loving his time with his Father, and then Adam and Eve sinned. When we look at the words, it is finished, we can't just look at that moment. We have to look at what happened before he got to the, to the time where he said, it is finished. Adam sinned, and now he put the entire human race in a bind. 
That was you. That was me. He put them in a bind, and there had to be another way to reconcile us back to the Father. And so if you could only imagine what was happening in the councils of heaven, that they must have gathered together. I don't know. I, we can, our minds can't comprehend this tri, triune God, right? The Trinity. It's not something that we can, you, we can imagine what that might be like. And so for me, I imagine that three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were having a conversation about who's going to go to deal with this situation because what I'm not going to do is lose what I created. And so I believe that in and of themselves, Jesus said, Father, I will go. I'll go. And and you know what? He knew what he was in for. And he still came. And he still gave his life. And so Jesus came to the earth, and he moved throughout the earth to rectify what happened in the Garden of Eden. And there was a plan. There was a plan of attack to make sure that the seed of the woman would not go forth throughout history so that you and I could not have another opportunity at eternal life. And so Jesus came. But before he came, there were all of these uh, people put in place along the way until it got to Jesus coming into the earth. And I remember that Cain and Abel had their little dealings in the field. One left the field, the other didn't because they they died. Cain killed Abel. But then God provided a ram in the bush, Seth. And Seth was the the, the provision made after Cain and Abel. He was called the replacement, known as the replacement. God always provides a ram in the bush. And all along the way, I'm not going to get to everything. You read your Bible, it'll bless you. You'll get an understanding of how God planned this whole thing. Nothing he did was by surprise to him. Nothing, he, everything God did was intentional. All along the way, intentionality with God. And he planned that every step of the way, he was going to make sure that what was told him in the garden, what was Jesus what was told in the garden would be that Jesus was going to have his heel bruised, but he was going to crush the head of the enemy. And so all along, with, that, with that premise then, God had to back his word up every step of the way because he had to protect the seed that would bring Jesus into the world. Yeah. And he protected that all the way into the book of Matthew. And he gave us our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew exactly what he was signing up for. But he fulfilled his destiny. And in the fullness of time, Pastor Ron, I love, that's one of my favorite lines. In the fullness of time, God sent forth Jesus. Born of a woman. With a purpose and a destiny with you and me in mind. And we thank God because because of what Jesus agreed to do, we now are in a place where we're going to spend eternity with the Father. Now let me see if I can find my notes where I stopped. So let's go to the word, John 19, verses 28 to 30. John 19, 28 to 30. Jaden, would it be possible to put that on the screen, please? Thank you. I took the print, the Bible with the print, with the smallest print. Can't see. So it says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, 
I want you to remember that word. That the scripture might be fulfilled, yes. saith, I thirst. Now there was, a, there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. Can you imagine? When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I sat in the bed earlier this week and I thought, what is the it that Jesus was referring to? What is the it? Oh, the depth and the height and the breadth of what he did for us. The it involved so much. It, 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 it encompassed deliverance. It encompassed freedom. It encompassed joy. It encompassed destroying of depression and oppression and sickness and disease and death. Hallelujah. It. It. The it is finished was for you and for me. It is finished. In Psalm 51, 1, it says, Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. And blotting out involves pouring something over a stain to cover and even try to remove it. But in the Old Testament, there was a day called the Day of Atonement. And in that moment of time, the priest, the high priest would go into the temple and he would make atonement for our sin, for the sins of the people once a year. And when he went in, he would lay his hands on a lamb that was chosen. And that laying on of hands transferred the sins of the people to that lamb. But the thing about it was that was just a temporary fix. It wasn't a permanent fix solution. But in that time, it was what they had to do in order for the sins of the people to be, be forgiven. Yeah. So the blood that was used was sprinkled uh, over the um, ark, on the, on the cover of the ark. And that blood just covered, but it didn't take away the sin. That's the difference between what happened when the high priest of Jerusalem went and did what they did versus what Jesus did on the cross. One blotted it out, one covered it, but the other took it away. And the reason you and I can live in peace and harmony with Jesus is because Jesus did a finished work yeah. on the cross. What he started, he finished, and he did it well. He did it well. So the Old Testament ritual each year was that, the Jewish holiday called atonement, and that's what the priests did during those times when they sacrificed symbolically to place their hand on the lamb that was killed and punished in their place. So imagine that every Jewish person that was around when Jesus was being crucified had to have recognized the terminology used in that moment when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. It's called one word. I knew I was going to forget this. Tetelestai. Tetelestai. Tetelestai has many meanings to it, but the most prominent meaning is paid in full. Yes. Yeah. Tetelestai. So, so, in the Old Testament, when they were transferring the sin to the, to the lamb, to the animal, that was a Hebrew word, 
that they used, right? So when they got to Jesus and the cross, the same Jews that were at the cross or around the time when maybe they, they were doing the um, sacrificial atonements, they would understand the language that was used at the cross. When they heard it, they understood and recognized what was happening. They knew that, the, that their sin was paid in full, in full. I paid my car off about six years ago. It's the best, how many of you paid your car off? It's the best feeling in the world. And then you're like, man, what am I gonna do with that extra $300 or whatever it is? And you find some way to blow it. But I paid it off and it was such a good feeling. I got the title, nobody owned it anymore. If it broke down, which usually seems to happen, <laughs> right, yeah, right after you finish that last payment and then everything starts not operating. But I paid my car off and it was the best thing to know that the car was paid in full and I had nothing else. Nobody, I owned it. Mm -hmm. Imagine that Jesus now owns us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And, and you know what? I love, I love Jesus because, because, because he did that. He can, he can stand and, and declare to the enemy, you got to take your hands off of my, my child. My, yes. so, so, so what I really want to say today is because of what Jesus did on the cross, because he finished the work on the cross, there's no excuse for us not to finish the work that he put us in the earth to do. Yes. Because we have him as an example to follow. It is finished. Tetelestai. By saying it is finished, Jesus was signaling to the Jewish world that there was no more need for sacrifice. Yeah. He took it all away. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin hath left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. Tetelestai, the work is complete. In the New Testament, when an employee had completed a day's work, what they would do is that they would go to their boss and what they would say, because New Testament time, they spoke Greek, right? And they would, they would say to the boss, Tetelestai. Tetelestai. It was a signal that whatever they were working on, whatever they were assigned, it was now completed. Mm -hmm. Tetelestai. Can you say that? Tetelestai. Yep. Similarly, when an artist would complete a piece of art, he would have a moment of unveiling where he would declare also tetelestai. It would signal that his masterpiece was completed. May I take that personally, that Jesus completed Karen Ricketts, his masterpiece. Well, at the time it was Karen Dotton, but you know, Karen Dotton Ricketts. And, and he completed his masterpiece. And that's what he calls it. He's the great art, what he, the architect. He's the great artist. He formed you before he put you in your mother's womb. Hallelujah. And he shaped you just the way he wanted you to be. So stop complaining about the kind of nose and eyes and shade you are and all of that stuff. He did that. That's on him. When Jesus came to the world, he told us what his job was. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. He knew his purpose, so he wasn't intimidated. I love, you know, he loved God enough not to get out of focus. He, the Bible said, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. And we'll talk about where he's hanging out right now before he comes back again. But tetelestai, the debt is paid in full. The most common use of that word. The debt was associated, that word was associated with debt collection. How many of us like debt? When a person finally paid off their loan, tetelestai. <laughs> 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 
So every time you, look, going forward, every time you pay off a loan, tetelestai, paid in full, no more debt. But he paid a debt he didn't owe. That's what makes me know he loves us. He, and you know, you know what? I, I was thinking about this on the way over, that even when Jesus was going through all he went through on the cross, he still had words of life to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then there was the man on the cross, the criminal on the cross, who said, Jesus, mm -hmm. remember me. Yeah. And when he said, remember me, he wasn't talking about just keep me on your mind when you get to heaven. Mm -hmm. He was broken, and he recognized his sin in the sight of God. And that word remember meant put me back together again. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus spoke a word of life again in the midst of the pain, the excruciating pain that he was going through. Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He still spoke life even in the midst of the bruising, even in the midst of his skin being torn and, 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 and ripped apart from his body. Even in the midst of that, Jesus still spoke a word of life. I ask you that when you're going through your situations, do you speak life? Jesus spoke life in the midst of his pain. In the midst of death, he spoke life. And then he said, it is finished. It is finished. Jesus said that. Tetelestai. It was an accomplished sacrifice that he made. He revealed to the ancient Hebrews that the Old Testament rituals that involved the priest and, and all of the sprinkling of the blood and the high priest going into the temple to the ark and so on, he revealed all of that to let us know that Jesus was the more excellent way. That there was a better sacrifice in the form of Jesus Christ, son of the living God, who came to earth in the flesh. Tetelestai, he said. And what's stamped on your soul is paid in full. Oh, paid in full. So when the fullness of time had come, yes. he was subjected to mocking by the Roman soldiers. They watched him and they, they mocked him and said, king of the Jews, uh -huh. king of the Jews. They mocked him. And as they clothed him in a purple robe and put a crown of thorns on his head, Jesus then began to walk down the Via Dolorosa, slowly to Mount Calvary. I want you to, I want, why I'm taking my time really is that I, I want you to think, if you could just picture in your mind what was happening when Jesus was going through all of that. His disciples fell asleep on him in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had no help. Only one person could, they allowed one person to help him carry the cross. But Jesus walked this road all alone for you and for me. And some say, so then why do they call it Good Friday? Because Jesus looked ahead at Sunday. And he knew that Friday was good because Sunday was a coming. <laughs> there you go. Sunday was coming, and he knew what was about to happen. The other night, I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw a hand. And it was turning over stones like this. 
and every stone that it turned over, there was nothing underneath it. And then I saw the tomb and the stone rolled away. And guess what? There was nothing in it. Nothing in it. And what the Holy Spirit began to minister to me was that he left no stone unturned. He looked everywhere to make sure sin was eradicated by the blood of Jesus. That there was, so, so take courage in that. You know why? Be encouraged. Because that means that the blood is able to wash away the deepest sin in your life. No shame, no guilt, no condemnation, for God did not send his son into the world, John 3, 17, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He left no stone unturned. He said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. And nobody's going to be able to come back and do anything that's going to turn over this decision to come and rescue you. It is finished. Accomplishing his assignment. Every whip, every bruise, every tear, every mocking word, all of the shame and the pain he endured, for he was wounded for our... He was wounded for our... He, we should have been on that cross. We should have had the nails in our hands. Yeah. We hear this year after year, but the truth is, it, that is the truth. We should have been there. It should have been me. It should have been you on the cross. But Jesus took the pain and he bore it, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. But guess what? By his stripes. It didn't even say we are healed. It said we were healed. That tells me that that happened in eternity. It was finished already, not when Jesus got on that cross, you know. It was finished in eternity. Jesus did it. Made up his mind to go all the way for you and for me. And so befitting is verse 3 of the hymn of It Is Well. It says, My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Did you hear that? Yeah, praise Did you hear that? Sing all oh, the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well oh Jesus made it well Condemnation, it, the fear, it.
it, the doubt, it, the depression, it, the sickness, it, the disease, it, the mental health illness, it, 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 hallelujah, it is finished, it's finished. When you're feeling sick in your body, it's death. It's finished. No more shame. Come on, say that. No more shame. You know, you know, you know what has happened is the enemy, and I'm not, I, I don't like to glorify him in our services, but 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 we need to know our enemy. Because how can you fight what you don't know? You won't ever know which way he's coming at you if you don't know how he moves, if you don't know his tactics. Huh? Yes. But we got to know our enemy. And a lot of times, even in this, in this day that we're living in, hear me, hear God. In this day that we're living in, you are going to need to know who Jesus is more than you ever have before. It, it, no more pitter-patter Christianity. No more I'm going to be in today and out tomorrow. He's coming again. Do you think that he went through it just so that he could sit back and watch you act a fool? No. No. He did it so that you can say, Tetelestai. I finished, hey, Paul said it. I finished my course. Yeah. He said, I fought a good fight. Kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord has prepared for me. You got one too. But you got to finish. The race. Yes. And what Jesus did, the it is so important. Mm -hmm. Because when you get in those hard places in life, remember that that hard place has an it in it. Yes. Yeah. It was already resolved. Even though you're in it and it feels like you're going to drown. It is finished. Jesus is he's not taking back his word. Praise the Lord. He's Praise not going to take it back. He, he, he did it. He completed it. Tetelestai. It's finished. Yes. Tell somebody, just say, it's finished. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. I'm going to move with Jesus so that what we do every day, every single day, it has to be in response to what Jesus did on the cross. I challenge you, and this, I'll close here. But our sin cost Jesus his very life. He went through something that you and I could never endure. I challenge you. Try Jesus the right way. And what do I mean by that? Don't play church. Amen. Say so. Say so. I'm not just saying that as a cliche, because we hear that all the time throughout the years as you come up in church. Don't, we, we shouldn't be playing church. Yes. I'm saying it for real because Jesus real. is coming. And he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's coming for a bride who is ready to receive him. Don't be fooled. You have to be ready. He didn't do what he did to come back for somebody that's going to spit in his face again. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. It is finished from Genesis to Malachi. All those prophecies that were spoken. Over 300 prophecies spoken about how Jesus was going to come. The Messiah was going to come. And every single one 
of those prophecies were fulfilled. Every single one of them. So this, I want to say, as I close, I need to find it because I was so excited when I felt like the Holy Spirit gave this to me. Finished. F. Forever. I. In my end. Name. I. Shut hell. E. Eternally down. Forever in my name, I shut hell eternally down. That's how you know it's finished. He has the keys of hell and death. The only thing left for him to do now is take Satan and do away with him forever. And he's coming back and he's going to do that. We are guaranteed. He, the Holy Spirit is the seal inside of you guaranteeing that you belong to the Lord. And he's coming back for you. It is finished. Forever in my name. Forever in my name. I shut hell eternally down. F-I-N-I-S-H-E-D. So you don't have to worry anymore. Jesus is the victor. You are not the victim. We reign. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Thank you, Pastor Rod. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. I just want to do something just before I take my seat. Pastor Sonia, I know you're watching. And the Lord laid it on my heart to pray for you. Because we know you would have been right in that chair, sitting down, listening, speaking in tongues probably. Father, I give you praise for our precious First Lady, for Pastor Sonia Stevenson. Father, I know that prayer knows no distance. And we also know that the blood reaches and so, God, we send the blood of Jesus to Pastor Sonia right now. That it would run through every part of her body. That it would bring her balance back in line. Everything that is out of alignment, we speak back into alignment in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, in the mighty name of Jesus, it is finished. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you because we know that when we call on you in faith, you hear and you answer. Send help from on high for Pastor Sonia and touch her body right where she is right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God message certainly is for each and every one of us a great reminder praise the name of the Lord that uh, Christ's work is finished amen he came to do a work for us a work of salvation and it is finished thank you so much Pastor Karen amen but his work is finished. Amen. But you, there's a response that you need to make to that finished work. Are you with me? 
you need to apply the finished work of Christ to your life. And in order to do that, you must receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because when you're doing that, when you do that, amen, then you are receiving the finished work, the finished work of Christ. Did you get that? Amen. amen. Oh, yeah. So there's a response to the finished work of Christ. So you're here tonight. And you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we just can't assume that everyone has accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Just raise your hand. want to give you that opportunity. And we're going to continue to give that opportunity in every service that we have. Amen. Is there one tonight? You have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, maybe you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but you have not yet gone through the waters of baptism. He said that it is to fulfill our righteousness. Amen. So you're here tonight, Pastor. I've already accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. No, I want to go through the waters of baptism. I want to follow Jesus all the way. I want to go with him all the way. Listen, we'll, uh, we'll fill the pool for one. Amen? I said we'll fill the pool for one. Praise, Praise the name Praise of the God. Lord. Because he left the 99 and went after the one. Amen? So you're here tonight. Hallelujah. And you want to get baptized, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. You have not yet been baptized. Pastor, I do want to get baptized. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand? We're going to close out our service. Thanks again, Pastor Karen. Praise the name of the Lord. Please come out on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Let's celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Father God, we give you thanks and praise, honor and glory. Lord, it is so good to be reminded, Lord, by the mouth of your servant, that the work that Christ came to do for us, it is finished. Now all we have to do is just be obedient. All we have to do is receive the finished work of Christ and apply it to our lives. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. I pray, God, you continue to bless Pastor Karen. Give her a double portion of your anointing. God, you're taking her somewhere. And I pray, oh God, hallelujah, just continue to lead her and guide her by your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord God, as we get ready to leave this place, may we never leave your presence. I want to pray divine protection upon each and every one of us in Jesus' name. That we'll make it safely to our homes. And then, Lord God, I pray that you'll turn every heart towards Spring of Water Christian Assembly on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We want to thank you in advance for the great service that we're going to have because your presence will be in this house in Jesus' name. So now, Lord God, I ask that the blood of Jesus cover each and every one of us and you'll keep us in your grace. We thank you, Lord, for this great experience on tonight mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Try to come early on Sunday. Amen. We always get a, a big turnout.